regular business where they sit down and they collaborate. And if you work with your manufacturers, you should be doing the same. I, I think that it starts at the university level. And there's a lot of research that's going on there. There's a lot, I can promise you, a lot of work where they're sharing information as far as cost. You know, they're working together to, to you know, again, to innovate. And I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm very close to the universities. I spend a lot of time there. And I'm happy to say that I, they are working together much more than so. You know, there, there are groups, for example, like the Home Fashions Product Association that I used to be president of and that Bob, you know, has been around for five years, you know. So I, I think that, uh, that you know, they're, they're working together. North Carolina Textile Foundation is an example uh, at NC State is working together. The larger companies are all working together on things like this. You know, we're friends. We, we're competitors, but we're also friends. So, I, so that is happening more than it ever has in the past. Any other questions from our group? I'm curious, kind of curious, you talk about the universities talking and working with each other and sharing their innovations. Once a company steps in, right, is the impulse to say, my mind, this is, pri this is proprietary, I'm the first one who got a seat at the table and nobody else can play in this sandbox anymore? I don't, I don't see that, you okay. know, I, I don't see that at all because a lot of this is being uh, d developed with companies from the various process areas where it could be, you know, the, the carding, it could be machinery manufacturers as well with weaving, with, with carding, with, with, you know, uh, it's amazing what's happening with that. The non-woven institute is the biggest non-woven manufacturers in, in the world are members of that and they're all working together on specific projects. So no, there isn't you know, where you're saying, you know, that's mine. Actually, the group of them determine what the projects are gonna be, and then the university is working, and then they're working with them jointly to, to develop a new technology or whatever. You know, when I uh, started building out the Innovation Center and, and figuring out the new product development um, initiatives for Under Armour, the first place we went to, we recruited all the internship, all the interns from NC State came to us and today m most of them are still employed at Under Armour in either their product development, their fabric development, or they're in their innovation center. So we have an obligation as well to hire the best but bring in the young and mentor them and teach them and get them to fill the backfill of us. If we don't continue to do that and, and you know NC State has an amazing opportunity for you to go visit and sit and go through all of the innovation there and use their technology. I mean, it's not any different than, than being able to get a grant and go somewhere. It's hidden right there for us to use. This isn't an advertisement for NC State, by the way. I didn't want anybody to think that. I'll be selling t-shirts after that. Yeah, we got the shirts. I've got a print. Are there other resources, now that we're on the subject, other resources that people should look to for ideas? Ideas around business, ideas around supply chain? You know, um, in Asia, some of the largest manufacturers went to MIT. And what they do? They brought in the MIT engineers and said, come in, look at what we're doing, and we'll pay you to build robotics. Come in here and work everything through on a robotic system. And you work with some of these very large facilities and some very small, and there's very little interaction from humans. The robots are carrying all of the fabrics around, everything's moving throughout, and what they're doing is they're, they're thinking different. We all think, we talked about NC State, but how many would think to go to MIT and bring in engineers on what needs to be done? I know, I know a company in Thailand that went to and hired some of the engineers from Ford. And they took the people in from Ford for one main reason. They wanted to understand how does the production line, the assembly line work with the robotics, but more importantly, how can they build that into their manufacturing? How can they build that into their supply? How can they understand the just-in-time model? 
Years and years ago, Dell Manufacturing in, in North Carolina used to bring in a 747 every single day from Malaysia with just a shell of, of Dell computers. And then they had all of their trims and everything sitting on the other side of the wall. As they needed it, the inventory was being held by the supplier. They called it in, they made those they made that Dell computer in that same day and they shipped it out. So they were shipping, producing, and getting paid way before any of their inventory had to be paid for. Those are the things that they did that no one else did. And there's a lot of apparel companies that are doing that same model today. Keeping their trim on the other side and just calling in as needed. They're not carrying the inventory cost. So you have to get creative. I mean, the, the robotics that are happening you know what's happening in the home fashions business is that they're going to other industries is what wayne is saying about the automotive business there's many other industries that are way ahead of what we're doing i promise you material handling is a piece of it but linking machines together um you know they've done some of that already but there's so much opportunity to do more of that and it's all by just looking at what's out there today understanding what's out there and then translating that into the textile business. So the direction is more automated or more automation, definitely. And I wonder if with the limited, I mean, mainly what we've got here is in home textiles, right? Rug manufacturing and um, a blow and fill of, of shells, right? Whether are those, is it possible that those can become even more automated than they are now? What do you think? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I definitely think so. I think there's a big opportunity in, in, the, in the rug business as an example. You know, I mean, I, I've recently seen a company that was so, was so far ahead as far as the automation in rugs that you know, it was all at a university and a another company that was in the in the robotics business.